What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are we are speaking the language of bromance plus one. We're the language I always make a three way joke and it never it never seems to land. So there's three of us and I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, we have a special guest on again, and it is John from the Pod Bros Network. Welcome aboard, John. Hey, what's going on, guys? I I, I didn't know if I should uh, say my name in in the I, I didn't want to break things up. Like everything flows so well between the two of you in the beginning of each episode. So I was like, uh, uh, I didn't know if that was my cue to be like, and I'm John. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here too. <laughs> well, I'm excited to do this episode. We do it every year. It's like you can mark it on a calendar. So for the fifth time ever, we're getting our group together. We're getting our bros together. We're going to do a bro huddle episode. And, you know, every year the leaves change colors, the earth gets to the same spot around the sun, and we start what we call a brand new year. A lot of times at this time of the year, people like to look back, right? I'd say, well, what did 2018 give us? And what we say is we got 52 plus episodes of that. So go look there. We are looking to the future. We are looking for the entertainment of 2019 that has us excited. This is video games. TV, movies, books, anything and everything out there. And I always get super excited to talk about these things. Yeah, because he says books, but let's be honest. I mean, I I don't read. You you read. (laughs) All right, let's just get it off the table right here. Every year we've done this. Every year we've said we can't wait for George R. R. Martin. I'm saying fuck them this time around. Man. <laughs> and then I no, laugh. I'm excited. And then I Didn't laugh they just a announce? Laugh. Oh, here Didn't we go. Didn't they just announce that the very last Game of Thrones is coming out in April? Hey, Sean, could you do me a favor? You're playing the audio from last year. Could you turn that off? Because we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> we're we're talking about 2019. I, 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 I maybe you're just listening to see if you know. Yeah, I, I've like, it seems like each year it's like I was checking daily, then I was checking weekly, then yep. monthly. And now I don't even like, you see something ping up where it's like, George R. R. Martin says, new book coming soon. <laughs> I think I got excited and clicked it, and it was his fucking Fire and Ice book or his Age of Fire book. Yeah. Like a right. prequel. I'm like, fantastic, great. <laughs> I want my other two. <laughs> and I always laugh. Oh. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> but it's a great segue. So one of the TV shows that I'm excited for is going to come out in April and is finishing up this epic tale. And it is Game of Thrones. That's true. And I, I this is some this is I think this is something we all say every year. Like, hey, Game of Thrones. But this will be the last time we say that, guys. That's right. That's we'll right. We'll be able to say prequels. I think they're doing some uh, some new series type of things but but yeah we're getting what six episodes five episodes i think it's six yeah six yeah. like yeah, hour yeah, and a half long episodes yeah. it's gonna be pretty exciting i'm i'm looking very much forward to it i know uh towards the latter seasons people haven't really been liking it as much just because of the whole uh fast time travel that they've really done but, you know, I, I look past that. That's okay. I still enjoy it for what it is, and I am. I am. I'm looking forward to it as well. It's going to be some craziness happening, and who knows? We'll see. I think the thing that I'm really looking forward to the most, if it ever happens, is how different the books are going to be at the end. Uh, you know, is he going to change <laughs> things up? Is it, yeah, you know, I, know, I will not hold my breath though. So yeah. I wonder if that, cause it was kind of nice to me to be able to read the book, than watch the show. Cause it's easy. It's easier for me to watch a show after I've read the book. Cause it doesn't mm. influence my opinion of it or how I'm seeing it happen. Yeah. Cause if oh, I'm reading a book, I put on my smoking jacket and then <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm. Because if I read Bring the book, me my after, pipe. if I if I read the book after I've seen the show, like I'm constantly looking at what I saw instead of what I'm reading, so I think I miss a lot more that way. Yeah, but yeah, like you said, like Lady Stoneheart is a big character in the books, not anywhere in sight in the in the TV show. Yeah, right. So how's that going to play in there? Quick question, Sean. Did you watch Passion of the Christ? I think I did. Yeah. Did you read the Bible? No. 
Yeah, I read the Bible. You read that? You read the whole Bible cover to cover? Cover to cover, yeah. Lie, lie, <laughs> lie. They didn't include this character <laughs> during the stoning when he was dragging the cross. <laughs> yeah, the book's better. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't hear anybody scream that in the theater during Passion <laughs> of the Christ. Nobody was like, this book is so much better than the book. <laughs> anyway, yeah, just sit there with that face, and I'll sit here with my superior face. Well, I'm curious, too. So we don't really have much details of the new season yet. We've got like a a small little teaser trailer, but nothing else up to this point. I don't know if they're going to no. keep that pretty tight to the chest. So Probably are we going to see any trailer whatsoever. Or is it just going to be more of that? Cause honestly, who do you have to convince to watch this? Right. Right. I mean, you just show the last episode, like shots of that of a fucking ice dragon and the wall coming down. Everybody's like, Oh yeah, I forgot a year and a half ago. We saw this. I'm yeah. fucking in. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no last, last year we didn't talk about being excited for game of Thrones. Cause there wasn't one last year. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it's been over a year and a half, I think, since we've seen Game of Thrones. That's right. Which is crazy to think. Yeah, it's been that long. That's fucking nuts. Everybody's saying it's like, you're going to need therapy after the last episode. Well, I mean, they say, like, the only details that I know is that each episode is going to be like, what, 90 minutes? Yeah, I think it's like an hour and a half. Each one they say is like a movie. Yeah. So, yeah, you're getting less episodes, but you're getting... As much, if not more, screen time. Which I like. I I would prefer, especially a show like that, I think lends itself to that kind of format. Like You look at something like Sherlock, and it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, there's only three episodes to a season. I'm like, yeah, but each episode is like 90 minutes. And it's, you know, I feel like, I feel like especially something like that kind of setting and the way they're telling that story lends itself to that type of format. Like I wouldn't want to see, you know, a 90 minute episode of parks and rec. Yeah, that's true. As long as I'm hoping that they keep, like, I hope it doesn't feel drawn out. I don't think it will, but I mean, if, if each episode's an hour and a half and it like just focuses on, you know, this group of characters and the next episode's this group of characters, you get all the way to the last episode. Then it's like, bam, now they're all together. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I, that's a good point. Like how, like, how do you think they're going to weave it? Are they going to, are they going to weave the story? Are they going to weave it to where groups, groups come together and then finally everybody's together at the end. And the other thing is like with, and I think this, this is, you know, the, the kind of other edge to that sword is you have so many characters. Are you going to get, a resolution that you're happy with. Well, and my thought is what you're going to get is you're going to get deaths each episode. Yeah. Like it's going to start yeah. whittling itself down to a point of like, who's going to be on the iron throne. Oh, it's these three people that are still alive. Uh, like, I don't think uh, hopefully it's not, but I would think you're going to get it all the way up there where everybody you're getting these big kills each week. Yeah. And the whole thing ends in a game of beer pong. Yeah. <laughs> with the dragons. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when Sam becomes Sam sits his ass <laughs> on the Iron Throne because he won a beer pong. But but that's the one. I mean, I think it was a great great starting point. We're not getting a fucking book, obviously, because I think we've cursed it every year. So we're not even really mentioning any <laughs> excitement for that. But we are excited for the last season of Game of Thrones. So that's kind of one of my TV picks for this year. That's a good uh, one, John. What do you got for some excitement? Any in any of the the categories? Oh man, so. I I was a little little bummed to hear about the whole Marvel on Netflix thing happening, but I am excited about Punisher. That's that's gonna be good. Uh good I at call. least I hope. I I have a feeling no matter what, it will probably get canceled. Uh yeah. just because that's the way things are going. But I've heard nothing but good stuff about it so far, so I'm I'm looking very much forward to that. I'm not sure exactly when it comes out though. Is it January? Uh, I, think it, I think it's January. I was gonna say I think it's it's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking it was at least the first quarter of uh, of the year. So who knows? We'll see. We'll see how it goes, and uh, then I'm I'll be very interested to hear what Disney ends up doing with their streaming device and 
I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, Another I'm not thing looking to subscribe to. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. not looking to subscribe to another one. You're right. So who knows? Who knows? But I, yeah, I'm looking forward to Punisher. That's been, uh, that's been fun. Yeah. It's kind of, it's interesting to see all the Marvel stuff coming out because, you know, Netflix, I think is getting a lot of flack for it, but mm-hmm. and I, I think I just saw an article that said that Marvel's not to blame for it. It was actually Netflix that was canceling it, which to me just smells of BS. I mean, yeah. Marvel's coming out with their own streaming service. Yeah. You know, they own these properties outright. I mean, either it's like, oh yeah, Netflix, you can you can do another season of Daredevil. It'll be three hundred million dollars. Yeah, for the right. right. Exactly. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we're gonna cancel it then. Cause yeah. that's like a quarter of our budget for the year. I'm curious yeah. to see where that Punisher story's going to go. And the reason I say that is because at I would say between out of all the series that you had on Netflix, I felt like, you know, Punisher and Daredevil were the two I'd say most intertwined. You yeah. had you had characters from both. I mean, you know, Frank was on Daredevil before he had his first series of The Punisher. And I mean, yeah. even the villain, like like are we going to see are we going to see Vincent D'Onofrio in The Punisher, mm. which would be amazing because season th- I know Sean, you haven't seen season three of daredevil. I'm about like three quarters of the way through it. And it's really good. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And sad to hear because knowing that it's end uh, after yeah. is kind of a bummer. I'm still on Luke cage right now. Still, uh, trucking my way through season two on that. But I, uh, I had Jessica Jones. I did Jessica Jones and season two to me was absolutely garbage uh-huh. and I could not, it really like, it took a lot out of me. It felt more like I was doing this as a chore than I was doing it to enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, that really, I felt kind of bad cause I really enjoyed season one of Luke Cage, but now I'm almost feeling the same way with that, but I still been liking Luke Cage. Um, and then I have to watch Iron Fist and I know, uh, a lot of people <laughs> didn't like that, but Mm-mm. No bueno, no bueno, <laughs> especially, especially season one. Season two was better. That's what but, I heard. Oh, season one. Season one was a slog. So and I'm think, somebody no- that's in the bag for the, for, for these kind of like, I'm rooting for it. And I still was like, I can't, I just can't. So, so do you think with all with basically all the Marvel properties getting pulled from Netflix, do you think that they're going to try and go out and either acquire a new property or do you think they're going to try and come up with kind of their own? Because like you look at Daredevil and Punisher, they can tell a superhero story. Yeah. Like do they go out and acquire something that's unknown or do they try to create their own? They already did. Look at the Umbrella Academy. That's coming oh. to that's coming to Netflix, I think, in 2019. What's that? The Umbrella Academy, it's based on a it's based on a kind of an indie comic. Um from hang on. I'll I'll actually have to look it up because I, I read like one issue of it and it was a while ago. So so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to bear with me. But I think I think Umbrella Academy's yeah, it's on Netflix or it's coming to Netflix in twenty in February. Is it is it a universe builder or is it like just its own thing? Um I think it was just kind of its own thing. Like I said, it was oh, who who put who put out the comic? Oh, it was a Dark Horse comic. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was it it was one of those comics that seemed like it had some critical acclaim and was fairly popular, but didn't. I mean, obviously, it's not in the you know super. It's not it's not one of those superhero tier kind of comics. I would say it's probably. I would say it's probably closer to to something like the Watchmen in terms of okay. its uh in terms of its tone. Uh yeah, and I guess that's that's a good question to ask Netflix. I mean, do they want to risk a new universe? Cuz that that's kind of an expensive um gamble. Yeah. Because you're kind of getting all these different characters whereas I mean, they've got you know, for every like 10 shows they put out, two or three of them always seem to be hits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're totally right there. And then you you I know we kind of joked about it with the budget though, too. 
Like with with Bloodlines, that was a, a a big hit for them, but they were like, we're spending way too much money on each episode. I think they said they were spending like three million per episode. Damn, and they were like, we we just have to cancel it. It's costing yeah. too much. And so yeah, you you have to start thinking about that sort of thing. Is it something that is it easier just to already kind of outright license the property from something that's already created, or do we do something on our own? And uh, I I feel it's uh, kind of I think the one thing that kind of blows my mind is thanks to Marvel and DC now all these kind of indie like Image stuff, Dark Horse stuff, uh, uh, they're getting licenses. I yeah. forget like uh, Amazon picked up the Boys, uh, Garth Ennis's uh, series, mm. and so it's like. Can you imagine what that's going to look like on TV? I, I'm I'm very curious. You, you had AMC, obviously, uh, the Preacher and The Walking Dead. So it's 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 cool for the indie scene, and uh, I I think with those you can kind of get away with offering a little bit less than what you would have to offer Marvel and DC, but still have a good product. Yeah, I think you yeah, see that in a, lot a of way. AMC. In yeah. a way, it might be kind of a good thing because it might kind of pave the way for you to see a lot of these, you know, I like I, I don't want to use the word indie titles, but a lot of these less, you know, DC now has their DC universe app. So, you know, yeah. you're going to get you're going to get those between between the CW and the DC universe app like, you know, DC's got their avenues that they're going to put out their content marvel's gonna have this disney streaming service so they're gonna have an avenue for their content so big huge companies like amazon netflix even hulu i mean where you know they want to get in this game too so i think that they're gonna look more towards like dark horse and image and stuff like that and so you're gonna i think i feel like you're gonna see Shows similar to like this, uh, the Umbrella Academy. I think you're going to see shows similar to that on on those types of services. Yeah, I which I think that. is yeah. I, you know, now Netflix is like, hey, now, or I think these other companies are like, hey, now Netflix has money to spend. <laughs> now that <laughs> yeah. they're not, you know, yeah, man. Marvel doesn't walk in and suck all the oxygen out of the room, so now, hey, we might have a shot. Yeah. Right. No, I th- I agree with you. So, Richard, what do you have for excitement for 2019? Um, okay. So we talked about TV a bunch. I I want I want to turn to video games because there was one game. Well, there's one game that I'm that is it's not set to. Well, it's not 100 percent set to come out in 2019, but that's what everybody's pretty much thinking. Uh, there's a couple other ones, but I who knows when those are. But the one. The one that I want to talk about, and Sean, I've I've spent time with you at length talking about this, is Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> yes. This game looks so, so good. Yeah, man. It's like Grand Theft Auto in the future, but even like more rated R. It's well, like rated I'm saying X. like, like this is like. You know, I mean, I grew up on sing. I grew up on single player RPGs, and I think you know, I'm, that's the that's where I come from. I come from the world of of Skyrim. I come from the world of of well, the Elder Scrolls series or the Fallout series or the Witcher series. You know, and now you're giving me you're giving me a, a single player RPG similar to Skyrim, but in a world where I can shoot guns and have cybernetic implants. There is, there is a 20 minute uh, gameplay, like beta gameplay footage demo that the company CD project red, which again, okay. CD project red. This is the company that did the Witcher series. Yeah. And so they put out this 20 minute demo online. You can find it. You can YouTube it and whatever. The 20 minutes looked so good. And there's, and even then they're saying, now keep in mind, this is, this is still, uh, this is, you know, production footage. Like this isn't finished. Like this isn't legit the way it was. It you were driving around the city you were oh fighting, you were doing all that. Yeah. Like you, you throw that around. up on a kick, 
a Kickstarter, GoFundMe, because it was real gameplay. I mean, how much you want? Hundred dollars, two hundred bucks? Like that was a game. I don't play a ton of games. I I rarely play games, but seeing that got me super excited. For just some kind of, of course, that's when you can't play with the kid in the room and you see <laughs> boobies all over the place. That's yeah. true. It, it it is an R-rated game or an M-rated I, game. I think it's a little bit more like X, maybe two X. Whatever. <laughs> that looked that so, bad. So I mean, you're pulling a a naked dead chick out of a bathtub. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so is that is that slated to come out next year, or is it got like the December thirty first of twenty nineteen on it? I, I think I think that's what it does. I think that's what it has. But considering so so this this gameplay demo was in May, and there's you know and they're and CD Projekt Red is notorious for being one of those companies that says you know it's done when it's done, which which I'm fine with. Like I'm if you know take all the time you want, but most people are speculating a release probably like late 2019. Like I'm guessing probably like somewhere between September and November of 2019. If I was to guess. So you'll probably see a release date in like May. I gotcha. Yeah. I always get kind of like, I don't play enough games, but anytime like days gone is a game that I've saw like a year and a half ago. That was, I was pretty excited about, but it's one of those that's like 12, 31, 17, 12, 31, 18, 12, yeah. 31, 19. Yeah. 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 But this, this cyberpunk 2077 looks so good. It looks like a game that I, that will probably, you know, anger family members because I'll be sitting there with it and dad, come have Christmas. And I'm like, no, I'm busy. <laughs> Didn't we do that last year? Yeah. <laughs> They're there, just I don't know. Unwrap it. I don't care. So, John, do you play many video games still? Or uh, I, I try, man. I, uh, I. It's funny you mentioned Skyrim. I'm now playing Skyrim, uh, literally right before I jumped on this for the first time ever in my life. Uh, it's only taken how long for me? It's 2018. <laughs> when did Skyrim come out? So like twelve or thirteen? Like Twenty. <laughs> no, when did Skyrim come out? Like 2011. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so well, I, I finally there. I just started playing Far Cry Five like a month ago, so I'm I'm in the same boat. Yeah, you know, I uh, there's certain games that come come out that I uh, like playing. I really love the Nintendo Switch. I did not think that I would like it as much as I did, and uh, I've bought quite a lot for it already, and I'm looking forward to some other stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda am looking forward to Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove <laughs> if it really is yeah. coming out. <laughs> For uh, those nostalgia fans. Oh yeah, man, big time. Hit up the big time nostalgia. And that's that's what Nintendo is just doing kind of right with stuff. They just uh, introduced their own online platform. And they're like, yeah. hey, you can play some old NES games. It's different from the NES console classic that they had out. And uh, every every month they're putting on these old games on their Nintendo Online. And I'm just going, oh, man, you know, I, here I am buying these new games that are totally worth it. But I'm going, I'm reverting back to childhood and playing games that just made me frustrated as a child and still do to this day. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, I totally do that too. I've played through, you know, I mean, when I got my, my PC, I was, you know, I went and I was like, Hey, let's find an emulator. Let's, you know, you know, my wife comes in and she's like, you have an $1,800 computer and you're playing <laughs> super <laughs> Mario brothers two right now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, You're like I know, isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's amazing. This is awesome. Well, yeah. If I could go back and tell young Richard what the future is like, he would just <laughs> bust in his jeans right there. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> yeah, I just recently. If you guys remember the old uh, Mutant League football games, <gasps> oh yeah, I yeah. loved Mutant League football. They, I think I had that. They released it 
on the, on the switch, uh, except I think they call it now like mutant football league or something like that. So <sighs> I don't know if it's the same maker or if it's kind of like an homage to the past, but I, I saw that at GameStop and I went, Oh my God. And immediately I just picked it up and had to buy it. And uh, I've been playing it and being frustrated with it ever since. <laughs> yeah. But, you rig the ball to explode and then pass yep. it and it, the, it's intercepted. <laughs> and then the guy explodes. Oh, yep. good you times. You can still bribe the ref. You can still kill the ref. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like regular football. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> well, we talked oh. about some video games, talked about a little bit of TV. Uh, there are a shit ton of movies next year. Um, and you guys can bounce back and forth between any other game or TV too when it's your turn. But uh, I kind of want to go with it's probably not like on everybody's mind, but when I saw the trailer for it, like, I mean, I, did, I knew a little bit about this character, but I saw the trailer and I'm like, oh my God, this is like super, like the big ver- version, but it's a superhero version of big. And that is Shazam. So I know Richard's not excited about it. We talked about it before. Uh, and I told him, I'm like, oh my God, this is like the superhero version of big. And he's like, I didn't even like big. I'm like, how the fuck can you not like big? <laughs> it's the greatest Tom Hanks hey, movie Tom- of all time. Oh, it's Tom Hanks tapping on a keyboard. And no, the greatest <laughs> Tom Hanks movie of all time was the burbs. So let's, oh, yeah. let's keep going. Whew. Yeah. Well, Which I think you've this never is- seen. I haven't. But I think this is a movie that DC really needs. Like it looks like it's semi lighthearted. It's not super dark. It, I think it's in the DC extended universe kind of um i thought they said something about like they tried to have a scene with like superman the guy who plays superman in it but it didn't work out Mm. but i mean how can you not love this like a kid who gets these superpowers like and becomes a superhero like it's it's every kid's dream right oh yeah man yeah uh i agree with you I I really was looking forward to this. Really am. Shazam kind of holds a special place in my heart just because of, uh, weirdly enough. So the, the origin story with Shazam, Captain Marvel, uh, DC versus Marvel, the whole idea of, Hey, this guy is exactly like Superman. Well, I, I found out about that court case, uh, you know, kind of going into a little bit before law school, Uh, On top of that, the old law firm that I used to work at, one of the original lawyers there actually worked on that case. Oh, wow. Yeah, I actually, I got to, he was a young clerk at the time. I got to talk to him about it and uh, he was like, it was one of the best cases I ever worked on because I just read comic books all day. (laughs) He's like, because he had to pinpoint, you know, I forget which side he worked on, who he worked for, but he was saying, you know, he basically had to find with all the similarities, why it was so similar and, and basically the whole story of it and now how it falls into DC uh, and to the DC's universe kind of like blows my mind. And I, I just, I love the idea of it and I love seeing it now on the big screen, getting its own thing. And the fact that when it came out, people were like, what, this is a DC movie. I'm actually yeah. laughing at the preview. <laughs> You get a you get a superhero doing the the band aid da- or the rubber band dance. I mean, come on, <laughs> you know. And it's I love like you see it in there. Like he's got his buddy, and they're going through, and he's trying to figure out what his superpowers are. So like he figures out it's like, oh, you got super strength. All right, check. Oh, you can like break shit. Check. And he gets shot at like a grocery store as he's trying to stop a burglar. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. oh my god, you're bulletproof. <laughs> check. Yep. But, I mean. All right. The no, movie okay, looks good. No, I was gonna say the, on like, it. like the movie looks doesn't look bad. I'm just not like whoa, Shazam. That's just me. That's 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 what I'll say. I'm not I'm not like I'm not rooting for the movie to fail. I, it's I'm just I'm kind of meh on the character, but the move the the preview looked looked okay. On terms of like like. It's it's not an opening night movie for me, but it's definitely mm-hmm. like the first week it's out movie. Like the mm-hmm. first Wednesday it's out, I'm going to go see it. But it's okay. not like some of the other big movies coming out next year where it's like opening night, first showing, you're there because you don't want to be spoiled kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we all I think we all know what movie that is, right? Lion King. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> no, I do. Would I mean? Are you kidding? What I love I about heard this that is James Earl Jones is playing Mufasa. 
I don't even think he like he's getting a credit for it, but did he even actually revoice anything, or did yeah, they just pull know. his voice from the other one? Because it's a shot for shot remake. And I don't what's know, awesome and I about don't care. this is like, oh my god, this is a live action Lion King movie. And you're like, wait, live action? Well, CGI. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like live live action because I mean because they look real. <laughs> like computer action. generated. Live look-alike action. Listen here, fucker. You live in the Matrix. Everything's computer-generated. That's a good point. We're all in the simulation anyway, so what is real? I don't know. But what movie were you really going to say, Richard? Uh, That's really what I was going to say. What what, what do you got? I don't know. Let's ask John. John, what do you have (laughs) for your next queued-up thing for 2019? Oh, man. So you're going to put it on me here. All right. So, I mean, it, it... It's obvious. It's it's the it's the elephant in the room. Uh, it's the Thanos in the room. I guess more like it. Uh, Avengers Endgame. Yes. I mean, Did- you left the theater in 2018, going, "Oh my God, what's what's happening? What's going to happen?" <sighs> and in 2019, you're still asking the same questions, even after that little teaser that we got. Yeah. Do we? You got a little teaser. And I did Ant Man the Wasp came out after, right? Yeah, it was after. Yeah. yeah. So there was a little there was a there was a there was a post credit scene there with just a hint of because we're because his thing his movie fell just at the end of uh of Avengers Infinity War. So like yeah. the post credit scene, it's uh, Pim and no, oh, I can't think of her name, but they both apparently go poofy. Yep. Yeah, and uh, he's he's trapped in the 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 molecule world. Yeah, and the quantum realm. Yeah, is it the quantum realm? Right. Qu- yeah, I think so. I think that's what they call it. But man, that first Avengers, like that's that's a movie that you can never capture that moment when you were in that theater, when it happened, because I don't, I don't know if your guys' experience was like this, but mine, like when the snap happens and it starts cutting to each character, like my theater was dead silent. Oh yeah. 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 And you see and somebody it, go and everybody's like, Oh yeah. Then dead silent. Yep. It was, it was, <laughs> he snapped his fingers. I think it was the, he snapped his fingers. And I think people were like, well, how are they going to fucking do something about that? Like, how are they going to fix that? Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. You yeah. left that theater like it was a funeral. Like yeah. nobody <laughs> talked. Nobody looked at anybody in the eyes. <laughs> That's true. I came out wearing a Spider-Man shirt and somebody shook my hand and said, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> <laughs> but and then trailer- you looked at him back and you're like, he just didn't want to go. <laughs> oh, but what I... What gets me pumped about this one, too, I'm a huge Hawkeye fan, and we didn't see him anywhere in the last Avengers. Yeah. But we get him as that Ronin character. Yeah. Like, badass. And this is a little bit of spoilers, but because everybody's like, oh, my gosh, it's badass Hawkeye. It's like, no, it is like revenge Hawkeye, because why the hell would he take up a Ronin mantle, like a lone warrior mantle? Uh, Because everybody's in his life's gone. Oh uh, yeah, his family's gone. Oh no! Yeah, Thanos gonna get that sword up his booty hole. <laughs> yeah, that's that's who's gonna finally take down the Mad Titan. It's Hawkeye. You know what? If it is, <laughs> he deserves it. <laughs> he earned this. I mean, they haven't used him for anything good. I mean, it's like, hey, he's Avengers been won. around since Boop. Thor. He's got to do something. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm still here. <laughs> Hawkeye, remember Clint? That's me. Yeah, that's me. I was there. I was. I was. I was there. I was watching Thor in the first movie, and then, and then I was in Avengers, and then I was in Avengers too. Remember that? <laughs> I, I drove. I drove the car, and I made fun of Quicksilver. <laughs> I said, "I'm a guy that shoots arrow. None, the arrows. None of this makes sense." <laughs> But the the trailer for this I thought did really well though because you know you get Tony Stark in space by himself, it still feels like everybody's just like at their end, 
And it gave me semi chills. Like it was, you know, again, like you didn't come out of this like, oh my God, they're going to solve everything. It's still kind of like, like what Captain America said. It's like, well, what if this doesn't work? And it's like, fucking has to. Otherwise, I don't know what else I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, okay. So um, the only thing I could compare it to is, is it, is, is this going to be the return of the Jedi to the empire strikes back with Ewoks? Well, maybe not so much with the Ewoks. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be, I don't know. I think it'll be good. I, I I'd probably say, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I am too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm hoping for it. I think, I mean, in this one, I think a lot of people are expecting a big main character death in the previous one which uh-huh. we didn't get. So now you're, you're kind of at the point where you're probably expecting one of the main Avengers to, or multiple ones of them to actually not make it out of this one. You know, is it going to be Thor? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be Captain America? Is it going to be Iron Man? You know, won't be Scarlet Witch. Won't be uh, 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 Black Widow because she's got her own movie coming up. Yeah, that's right. And now, you know, that's... They've been talking about doing like the Loki TV show through the Disney streaming and like yeah. Tom Hiddleston supposed to be playing them, reprising them. So it makes you think, but then they were saying, no, 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 Loki's dead. Uh, like I, and uh, who knows? I, I don't want to speculate what they're going to do, but uh, it's like, okay, well, is this, is this going to be a prequel show with Loki in it then? Or are you just, well, that's to the say thing that? is I, I think I, I, th- and I'm and I'm happy for it. I think that Disney has kind of fucked the meta so much that now you're just like, well, I I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, it man. seems like they can. It seems like they can write their way out of fucking anything. So I guess <laughs> I, I guess we'll get what we get. Maybe Doctor Strange comes back and turns Loki. You know, brings Loki back from the dead. Who the hell knows? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Loki is a god though too. So. Uh, I mean, he's died in Marvel and has come back. That's just kind of yeah. what they do. So, well, and yeah. it's comic books. I mean, every character's died and come back. So yeah, right. Yeah, they can play yeah. on that trope pretty easily. Captain yep. America died and came back. Yeah, he did in a really weird way. Yeah, a very <laughs> weird way. So, how do you guys feel then? So, the the kind of tie into that's going to be what comes out in March is Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. What are you guys thinking about that one? I mean, that's I really kind of. Se- I hope it's not like- Green Lantern. That's what I'm going to say. I hope it's not green there because it's because it's I mean, you know, it it was kind of the same premise. You know, Captain Marvel was like it's it's like a space cop, you know, and and which is what Green Lantern was. Green Lantern was a space cop. And so I'm just hoping the Captain Marvel isn't Green Lantern and then I'll be fine. Yeah. um, Oh, no, go ahead. No, go ahead, John. It's up. It's you. No, I was I was going to say I. uh I was very surprised at that they had the scrolls in there because the scrolls came out of fantastic four and it was like, okay, did Disney and Fox come up with some kind of deal before their big, huge deal where everyone gets reunited and it feels so good. Um, but like seeing that I was going, wow, that's, that's going to be very interesting. If they do the scrolls, right, this could be really cool. Uh, kind of crazy to see Nick Fury with two eyes. Uh, yeah, I, I've already, you know, Nick Fury has been rewritten so many times now mm-hmm. that it's just like forget the David Hasselhoff Nick Fury. Uh, <laughs> we're we're going with the Samuel L. Jackson Nick Fury, and yeah, and I, I mean, I'm going, oh, okay, all right, whatever. And I keep forgetting that Captain Marvel takes place in the '90s. I think is what they said. So yeah, what what uh, clued you into that? Was it the uh, blockbuster? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, brought back sweet, sweet memories. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Like you're gonna have like teenagers in there and be like, what the fuck's a blockbuster? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, like, yeah. well, guess what, kids? At one time when you wanted to have Netflix and chill, you had to go to Blockbuster, rent a movie, and then take it back to your house. And they've already stopped listening because they're watching a YouTube video on the history of Blockbuster. Yep. Yeah. Holy shit. And then you're like, I- in Alaska? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's one left, right? There's one yeah, left. I think so. There's one in Alaska. I've always heard that the, they were still making money. It's just whoever the key owner, I think it's uh, DirecTV owns Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. They were just kind of like, we're we're done with these. We don't want to mess with them. Yeah. Well, because well, I I mean, I think Blockbuster started to do a mail service similar to what Netflix started out doing, where they'd mail you DVDs, but yeah. they just started way too late. 
Oh yeah, they did. They yeah. started that way too late and never, I mean, by the time Blockbuster started doing that, then Netflix had already, you know, upped their streaming service and then it was game over. So, but so with cap, so like I said, Captain Marvel space, it's, I, I feel like it's going to be a space cop movie. You're going to have the scrolls, which I, which is awesome. Cause you're going to have the scrolls. You're going to have the Cree. The Cree mm-hmm. will be in there. So um, I've al- I think th- they've already said you're going to get an appearance of Ronan the Accuser. Yeah, he was in the trailer. Yeah. So you're bringing him back. And then so then the question is going to be how well because when you're talking about the Avengers, like most of those characters have been together for a while. Yeah. And have been through some stuff. And so you're going to have Captain Marvel in March. Like, how well is that? How well do you think that is going to gel with this already established kind of kind of thing? Yeah, no, I mean, you're, I, you're, it, you're totally right there. It might that might be the thing where people go, ah, eh, that was kind of cheap. Because at the end of Avengers, when Nick Fury is like, we got to call her or whatever, yeah. and he has his pager or whatnot, it was like, oh, what's going to happen here? Uh, Because number one, not a lot of people know who Captain Marvel really is. Because Captain Marvel, I mean, and then uh, here we go, uh, Shazam, and then you had Captain Marvel, then you had you know Captain Marvel, then uh, or Ms. Marvel, Ms. Marvel, yep, yeah, who then becomes yeah. So it's kind of a, a a crazy backstory when you look at the history of the character itself, but. Uh, it isn't one of those strong characters that like everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, Iron Man and Captain America. But who knows? Uh, people really embraced Black Panther, and and uh, even in the world of comics with Black Panther before all this, it was really not until kind of like the mid to late two thousands that Black Panther actually started to become even a, a bigger character than what he was. At first, True. you know, it was just kind of like, oh, hey, he's going to be in some of these books. He's going to be featured. And then all of a sudden it was like he's part of the Illuminati and, you know, he's kind of has become this huge thing. And yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool. So I mean, he was just a guy that palled around with Cap every once in a while. Exactly. Like, oh, here's Cap yep. and Black Panther. And then. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Exactly. I think what Captain Marvel half for it, though, is it's been like the last movie was Ant-Man and Wasp. That was like June. Yeah. So we've had it'll be like eight or nine months before since we've had a a Marvel movie, and I mean that's what they did with the last Avengers is they had Thor right before it. So you had yeah, Thor but like you, a month or two before, and then jumped into right. Avengers. But I'm saying I'm saying like Thor was already like that was Thor's third movie. Like I'm saying you're you're taking you're in or you're you're injecting a completely brand new character, and the way they play it off at the end of Avengers is that is that Captain Marvel is going to be like almost like this linchpin Mm -hmm. that's going to, that's going to bring everything back. Are you thinking, so is your concern that the movie itself won't tie in very well or that people aren't going to go see it or no, I'm, I guess if I have a concern, it's that how, how is, how well is the character Captain Marvel going to tie in with Tony Stark and Thor and Cap and, I I think it's going to be you're going to get an independent movie kind of like Thor Ragnarok like that had nothing to really do with um the Thanos or the Avengers at all and it was just the very last like end credit scene where it's this is tying into the movie. So I don't think there's going to be anything specific that ties her into the universe. It's just like, "Oh my gosh. Here's an hour and a half of her just with ridiculous superpowers kicking ass." Mm-hmm. And for some reason she leaves and says, "Hey, if you need me, call me back." And we're going to get her coming back to earth after the snap. That would be my like, guess. Like one, like, like a transition that I felt was really seamless was Dr. Strange. Cause Dr. Strange didn't, didn't know any of any of, you know, didn't know Tony Stark or, or Bruce Banner or those guys, but it seemed like he, you know, kind of weaved in very seamlessly yeah. in, into, into infinity war. No, you're totally and right. And so I guess I'm hoping for that. I'm hoping yeah. that cap that you get, you know, a, a fairly solid Captain Marvel movie by itself and that and that it just doesn't feel like it's sho- it doesn't I don't want Captain Marvel to feel like it's sh- being shoehorned into Avengers is what I'm saying. Hmm. Hmm. So do you want her to like fall through the Avengers tower? Maybe. 
And then And to be okay, so not to get all not to get all like, you know, push up my glasses on you, but you always give me shit about the Game of Thrones thing. But in the Infinity Gauntlet comic book, it was the Silver Surfer who crashed through uh Doctor Strange's <laughs> Sanctum yeah. Sanctorum. Yeah. Yeah. To tell everybody that Thanos is coming. Yeah. I don't I mean that that to me you could say is kind of seamless, but that's definitely like of all the pl- I guess he was sent there. So it wasn't like by random choice or random happenstance. He, he right. fell through there. But I guess I all mean, I'm saying think- is that I hope, I hope that I hope that Captain Marvel weaves into the whole Avengers story as well as say Dr. Strange did. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you're just going to get kind of shown up, but at this point, everybody's so like down that if it's like, Oh my God, like you're super powered. Okay. You look trustworthy. You may join our party. <laughs> right. <It's> wearing, <laughs> Captain Marvel's wearing the orange superhero vest. So that yeah. way everybody knows. <laughs> You're the good guy. So, so okay, so we talked about Avengers, Captain Marvel. Rich, what's uh, what's something else you're looking forward to for 2019? Um, in terms of, okay, well, nah. okay, here's, here's a movie. This isn't until... Actually, I'm not sure when this is coming out, but it, I know it's 2019. Um, uh, kind of in the same vein as superheroes, Sean, but Glass yes. is out in 2019. Comes out in January. Yeah, I feel I'm. I'm glad that I'm glad that these things are getting stacked in kind of the front of the year. Yeah, John, did you see Split or uh, Unbroken, Unbreakable? I, I have not seen Split yet. That's the only one I haven't seen. So I, I need to hurry up and see that uh, because I am very much looking forward to Glass. So. Oh, so good. I, I, didn't, I haven't seen Unbreakable yet. I need to watch that before. You, you didn't watch Unbreakable? No. Nope. Oh, wow. And Split, you don't need to watch. You, no. you cannot watch Unbreakable and watch Split. But I, I think completely to get the agree. Whole picture. I think you have to watch both those before you can watch Glass. But well, because the only thing you get that ties in un- that ties in Split to Unbreakable is is just that post credit scene at the end. Yeah, yeah. I don't think but there's I mean, anything else that really ties them together. I'm not like a M Night Shyamalan fanboy. I feel like, like to me, I can see this last movie having some kind of silly twist where you're like, oh, all right, that was kind of dumb. But I mean, this guy's essentially creating his own comic book universe. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Like more of that. That's what I want. Yeah, and it's and it's you know it's it's something that's kind of you know in the vein of like you said something that's you know super popular right now. It's comic books and superheroes, but it's you know it's a it's a fresh take on a played out idea, which I'm totally fine with. So, so I mentioned Glass really quick, but another one, and this is a movie that I want that I haven't seen the first one, and I think Sean, I think you have, but I haven't seen the first one. I want to see the first one so then I can watch the next one. Is Happy Death Day to you? I haven't seen either one, but the oh, second one looks one? so good. Mm. Yes, I haven't seen the first one. I want to watch the first one and then so and then watch the second one. Have you but seen I'm, any I'm, on that on that, John? No, no, I ha- I didn't even know oh. that they were making a second one. Yeah, and yeah. it's so apparently the first one she spoiler alerts, I guess, but I mean it's a horror movie, so you're kind of like oh, okay, and yeah. they they kind of put it all on Front Street in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. She it's it's Groundhog Day, but you're getting murdered. Yeah, every she, day, right? Yeah. yeah, and she fights. She beats whoever she has to beat, and she's living like the best version of whatever life she did. And then all of a sudden, she wakes back up at that very first day. And like has to go through it all again, except this time everybody else is getting murdered, not her. Oh, no way. Yeah. So each time she figures out like, okay, she kills somebody or whatever, but she has to kill herself to start over because all these other people have died. It's essentially like a video game. It's like, oh, well, you can't proceed (laughs) forward if anybody in your party dies. Yeah. Yeah. And so she starts like, he's like, well, she's like, what do you mean? I have to be murdered? And like, well, you could probably off yourself, I guess. And so now she starts like killing herself in like creative ways. Like she's on an airplane, she takes off all of her clothes but her underwear and like just jumps out with no parachute. <laughs> <laughs> like this is campy horror that I love. Uh, yeah. Awesome. And again, it's a it's a you know, it's 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 groundhog day but with murder. And yeah. that's awesome. Fresh take on a on on something cuz I loved Groundhog Day. Love that yeah. movie. 
Bill oh, Murray yeah. made that movie. But yeah, ha- happy death day to you. I'm 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 actually like I said, I haven't even seen the first one and I'm excited for the second one. Yeah, so, so all the first trailer was like, I, I'm into that, but never watched it. And the second one, yeah. came, I was like, fuck, I wish I would have seen the first one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, John. So we've got a few minutes left. Um, do you want to kind of do a little bit of a, a hot round on a couple things you're excited for? Oh, man. Uh, geez. Toy Story 4. That'll be another yes. fun one coming out, yeah. too. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I, I hope I don't cry like a big baby, but who oh knows? Oh, my God. Nope. We'll see. I, I've only seen one, but then I went back like – six months ago and watch two and three. Now that I have a son that's like three. Yeah. Fucking bald like a baby. <laughs> how hard how hard did you cry at three? Oh three. my God. When he's oh he's giving those toys that little he's giving the toys to the oh my God. Yeah. Woody's stop, there. Stop it. Stop if it. If you want to ball like a baby, oh somebody took that scene and imposed all the Marvel heroes and put <laughs> uh Stanley's face <laughs> On, oh come uh, on! What's his faces? And I think it's like Feige's Feige, the kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, knock it off! And he gets to Spider Man, and he's like, "How'd you get in here, Spidey?" Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, I hate you. Now I have to watch this. Yeah, I it hate was just a you comic, so but, much. Oh my god! Like that. That came out like three or four days after Stanley passed away, and you're like, yeah. "Oh, oh you're fucking- the worst kind of person." Oh, Look, man. why do you make me feel, Sean? <laughs> That, oh, you were the worst. That that also brings up too, like we we're going to get the last Stan Lee cameo in 2019, and that's gonna be like bittersweet. You're just gonna yeah. sit there and you're gonna go, oh man, like this is just crazy to think about. Yeah, Rich and I talked about that during our Stan Lee draft, and I think he's recorded five. Yeah, so yeah, I think like so. The, the next five movies, you're gonna see Stan Lee. You're gonna see Stan Lee. Then there, you're gonna go to a movie. And watch it, and I don't know if you'll notice it during the movie, but I'm sure at the end when you're walking out, you're gonna be like, "Oh I fuck, there was no Stan Lee." Yeah, it wasn't. Which I wonder if the last one he's gonna cameo is gonna be the Spider-Man Far From Home. Like to me, that yeah, maybe. I agree. I he's gonna, and you know, he's gonna say something fucking that's just gonna make you like ball. Uh, yeah. Oh, there, there's, there's quite a few movies that I'm looking forward to, but I also am being a realist and know that I'll probably not get to see him in theater, even though I want to. I, you mentioned Spider Man, Godzilla. <gasps> uh, yes, Godzilla <laughs> looks so good, and they're does, putting all man. the other monsters in there. And I was showing Sean the trailer like last week, and I was like, "Look, there's Ghidorah, and the three headed dragon, and there's Mothra." And, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I grew yeah. up on those movies so hard when I was like seven years old. I binge. I used to binge those movies. My dad would go to the video store and just grab them all. Oh, that's Godzilla, awesome. King of the Monsters, Godzilla, you know, King of the Monsters, Planet, you know, Battle on Planet X, and oh, yes. yeah, and I, oh, I loved all of them. Oh yeah, I, man, yeah, that uh, that that looks sweet. Oh uh, man, uh, I didn't even think there's so much coming out in 2019. I didn't even realize that the new Star Wars is going to be coming out in 2019 yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. we're supposed to get a trailer for that soon, and I haven't I haven't heard or seen anything else since they they kind of pushed it back too. Yeah, man, I I felt bad for them after the the last well, all the solo. Of them. Yeah. yeah, poor solo. Uh, got- I know, and it's sad because I really liked Solo. Yeah, and yeah, I was kind of I was kind of on the <laughs> fence about it. I went and saw it in the theater, and I was yeah. kind of like, it was good. Like it wasn't like I and I think I like Sean and I reviewed it, and I said like you know, it wasn't great. Like if you're asking me what was oh my god amazing about it, I mean I could probably say some things that were good, but if you would ask me what was wrong with it, I really couldn't say anything. Like I couldn't tell you what was wrong with it. But there was like one part, like his name, how he got his name was kind of like, okay, that's kind of dumb. But yeah, other than that, yeah. it, was, it was all right. Yeah. Yeah. But when I saw uh, it, I watched it again when it came out on, on digital. And I was like, I really like this. Like I yeah. watched I it the second the kid, time. Man, I, yeah. Him, I don't yeah. Yeah. Go casting was, if there's one thing that I think was amazing, casting, casting was on point for that movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. I agree. 
Uh, it chapter two. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, yes. I Rich has a big Godzilla boner. I've got a big it too boner. <laughs> I, I think, excited. I think yours sounds more gross. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I look forward to the Lego movie too, as well. Yeah, uh, I know my daughter is going to look forward to Frozen too. Oh, uh, <laughs> let it go! Yeah, man, tell me about oh, it, <laughs> man. I'm gonna have to go see that. Crap! Uh, I, <laughs> I am looking forward to the Joker movie. I don't know how you guys feel about that. <sighs> When it first was announced, I was like, uh, but seeing a little bit of the behind the scenes, and what they're doing good with this, I think, is they're like, you know, we're going to let you in on everything. You're going to see what he looks like in the yeah. makeup. You're going to see some background stuff. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll go see it. I'm, I was going to say, I'm, I'm warmer to it now than when it was first announced. Yeah. No, uh, seeing the more behind the scenes, even though it's kind of funny, it's becoming a meme. It's like all you see is Joker running. That's it. It's like, here's the next <laughs> yeah. scene from Joker. And it's just him running. Joaquin Phoenix running again. You're going, oh, okay. Are we going to get something different? <laughs> uh, gosh, man. The new Hellboy. Uh, oh, yeah. Crazy David Harbour's think- fucking ripped. Oh, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, mm. crazy to think that that's going to happen. Uh, it's weird that uh, Ryan Reynolds is playing Pikachu in Pokemon, you know, <laughs> Detective oh, Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh dude, there's there's a lot going on that uh I'm excited for. Mo- I mean movies are kind of the easiest ones to do. I I'm just looking forward to playing some Red Dead Redemption 2 during Christmas time uh, as well. Oh but, yeah. You know. Haven't touched it yet, but it looks really good. Yeah. Uh Sean, one thing I'm surprised you didn't mention at all. Uh, uh it's my turn, so maybe I'm going to mention it. Oh, oh. I'm Mr. sorry. Well, we already talked the gun. about the <laughs> you know, Why we don't you just come over here, Richard? Lion King. Richard, why don't you just come over here and kill my dog, man? Oh. <laughs> Dude, John Wick 3 is yeah. coming out. I'm guessing that's yeah. what you're alluding to. I was. Uh, I was. Oh, this is this is a movie I didn't know, or like a series I didn't know what I wanted. Like, you see John Wick. Like, I went to it, and it's like, it's about, you know, the guy from Game of Thrones who got his wiener cut off coming over to, you know, What's his face? His house killing his dog. Yeah, yeah. I'll, why did I forget you, his name? I'm bl- drawing a blank. Keanu? Keanu Reeves. Yeah, I just missed it. Oh, I thought you were talking about the other guy. I was like, no, John Ooh. Wick. But yeah, <laughs> okay. but it's like it's like this whole awesome like universe, and you get the second one, which is even not better, but just as good. And now you've got like John Wick three on the run. So I don't, have you seen any of those, John? Yet? I I hate to say it, but no, I have not. Oh, if you get a chance, dude, I've yeah. I've been wanting to. I just he, had, Sean sold me on him. Yeah, I tried to get Rich to watch this for like a year, and the second one came out. And he's like, "Oh, watch it," and he watched it, and he loved it. Yeah, yeah, he got a John Wick tattoo. He meanwhile, loved it so much. meanwhile, I tell you to watch like the ten burbs. different things, and yeah, <laughs> I get. You, I want you to watch the burbs. You're like, mm-hmm. I know, I'm I know, I know you made busy. Mention- I know you made mention about a, a possibility of maybe doing another commentary track like uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, maybe that's something that I'd be looking forward to in 2019. Wink, wink. That's uh, a good seeing, idea. Seeing an LOB uh, commentary track on the burbs. We could oh. probably do that. I think we should do that then. On the burbs. We haven't done a commentary for a minute. I guess I guess we should. I yeah. guess we should. Uh, and then you know, I got a couple other movie ones or TV ones. Um, Walking Dead has kind of started getting better. Um, I don't. I know a lot of people have kind of fallen off that, but it's definitely getting a little better. But Black Mirror season. Five oh yeah, is supposed to be out soon. Um, wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, there's a certain podcast called Strange Indeed that's going to be covering that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I heard I heard one of those Black Mirror episodes they're doing it like a choose your own adventure. I've heard that, yeah. I heard they were doing it like a like you use your remote and it's almost like no a choose way. your own adventure book. Like that you had when you were a kid where you were reading it and it was like, if you want Timmy to go down in the well, turn to page 48. If you want yeah, Timmy yeah. to say, screw that little girl, she can die on her own, turn to page 12. <laughs> uh, but that's a show I absolutely love. And then Stranger Things. We get that probably in the summertime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there was a movie that I haven't heard anything about. All, I, all I've seen is a title, 
but apparently they're doing they're they're doing a Dark Phoenix movie. Yes. Uh, I've seen the trailer for it. It looks okay. Uh, have you okay? I haven't seen I haven't seen hide nor hair of it. So I, that one. Yeah, looks, she like, I was like, yeah. mm, okay. I could I could do that. I can get behind that. John mentioned Godzilla, and I was like, yes, all of the Godzilla, <laughs> all of the things. Um, TV wise, I didn't really, I didn't really, you know, I mean, the Umbrella Academy looked okay. Um, Netflix is doing a Witcher series, which I'm not, yeah. sh- oh, I'm not yeah, sure how that's yeah. going to go. I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have. That's all I have fit to fit to speak on all right well so we kind of talked about the shows and stuff that we're excited for so john as part of pod bros i thought we'd give you a little opportunity to talk about what you've got going on and then maybe some stuff for 2019 for pod bros oh thanks man i'll try to keep this uh short still going to be (laughs) option number one get rid of that language of bromance (laughs) podcast yeah right these guys are the worst no way oh wait i meant to say that out loud No, no. Uh, I, I hope to keep doing what we're doing. We're we're doing some fun, crazy stuff. It's it's awesome to see just in general the stuff that people have been able to do since joining the Podros Network. What they've gotten into now, and it all was because of podcasting. And that just makes me happy. Uh, in in my own podcast and whatnot, we're still doing the excellent wrestling fan. That's still been going on. Still going to do stuff with that. Still going to get more involved with the local indie scene here in Michigan. Uh, the Jean Pod Van Dam cast is still going strong. We're very happy with that. And that's still going to keep going, uh, doing, doing all the crazy fun action films. We'll probably uh, branch off and do some more. We've joked and teased about a Nicolas Cage, like Rage in a Cage cast. That would uh, be badass. So we'll see. We'll see if that happens in 2019. Um, Do you want me to edit that out? Because that is a good idea. <laughs> oh. That is a good idea. You could cover all those movies. You could watch them freak out. Oh, yeah. Oh, like man. his new ones, too. Like he's got some fucked yeah. up new ones. Like, what was that like, one? What was that one he just came out with? Uh, Mandy? Did you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, Mandy. I just watched that one. Mandy. It's like where he goes to save his wife and she dies, I think. And like, yeah. it's like the first 30 it's, minutes is like before the, the uh, cart, the uh, lead card thing whatever the fuck that is what was the one what was the one he did where the parents were going crazy trying to kill the kids oh i don't remember what that one was but yeah i know what you're talking about yeah the best the best quote in the trailer is like you're the the parents are trying to kill their kids and the kids are like locked in the basement they're trying to get in and then his wife is like hey steve your mom and dad are here what do they want (laughs) (laughs) yeah i watched that movie mom and i think it was called mom and mom and dad I think hmm. you're right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, he's done so many different movies that I think uh, that's that's definitely going to be up our uh, – that's what we're going to do next. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it turns out. And, uh, man, uh, just with the Formula E started back up. If you're a big racing fan, Electric Series, we're, we're getting back in on that. And, uh, gosh, man, there's – so much, so much going on. Pabro's promotion is still doing its thing. We're still, still every once in a while putting stuff out, trying to help, help promote the people in the area. And, uh, just in general, try to get back into building the network back up and doing stuff and concentrating on that. That's, that's kind of my biggest, biggest thing that I want to do in 2019. I, I had started a new job in July and things have been absolutely crazy and fun and I love it, but it's also just, it's left no time for me to concentrate nearly as much as I'd love to on the network. So, uh, I have a great group of people on the network and, uh, very, very happy with who and what we have and, uh, be on the lookout for some, uh, some some videos and whatnot coming actually getting yeah. more and more into that uh Kapowcast nice. and and uh i've been working with them they they put out a teaser trailer for the snapping and uh we're we're gonna be filming a little a little bit of an extra for that so we'll see how that goes nice and is are you guys is i can't remember if poppers was a year before we started are you guys celebrating five years this month december or so yeah yeah so um so 
the the website and stuff was back in July, but it wasn't until it really launched. Everything happened in the middle of, of uh, 2013, but it's actually today, the day that we record, is the day that I made the announcements. Uh, it nice. was in my memories. It, t- it kind of blew me away. I was like, what a better day to record than the day that we yeah. announced that it went public. <laughs> Congratulations. So, That's thanks. pretty awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks. So it's been, you know, uh, five years now and we've, uh, just been having a ball with it. And, and, uh, you know, I'm hoping in July, once again, when we hit, you know, the, the six year mark, when everything started, the whole idea started up, uh, that, well, I mean, the ball got rolling, I should say, I think it was in April of 2013 that it was the rough draft was laid out. Nice. But uh, July was like the purchase of the domain and everything. And it took from July all the way to December for everything to finally smooth out. And then you guys came on board and uh, it's been pretty awesome since. Like I said, you pretty much I equate stuff to hockey being from Detroit. So it's like you're pretty much one of the original six for me. So it was it was us. And it's good to see that for the most part, the original series are still going strong on the network. I'm pretty excited yeah. about that. Woot. So now yeah, we're pumped. Yeah. We're celebrating five years this year in June. I think it was like August maybe of 14. We joined the network and yeah, I think there's like four or five other shows on there. Yeah. Man. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy to think like it's been five years for us. We've released 235 episodes in a row every single Sunday. 235 episodes and collectively like 12 listens. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, we're, we're hoping to make it to five straight years, which to me is crazy to think about. Like when we first did our first year, I expected us to miss a couple weeks here or there because life gets in the way, but we got to a full year, 52 straight weeks. And it's kind of at this point, it's like kind of almost a, I don't know. What would you call it? A personal goal not to quit. Yeah, or not to stop. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to break the streak, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, honestly, you guys are uh, pretty much the only podcast that I know. Whether you want to like talk about big time ones or small indies, uh, that has had a consistent week in and week out episode. Like you don't take a break. I think that's the one thing that people don't realize with podcasting that it's very few and far between podcasts take breaks like TV or, you know, movies, you get this break in between even radio for sometimes, like when you're doing holidays and whatnot, you guys have been consistent for close to five years. And well, it's I, easy. I mean, it's easy to, you know, because like, Oh, we'll miss a week. Oh, well, you know, like I, I'm busy. We could, we could just do it next week. And yeah. You know. right? Oh yeah, it is. It is. And I mean, that's, that's kind of what we've done. Yeah, it's just been, uh, it happens. It, it happens to the best. So it, it says a lot. And uh, I, I think you guys haven't missed a beat. You know, I think things are still great and it's still fresh. And uh, wish you nothing but the best of luck going into 2019 as well. well thank you. And we appreciate everything you've Aww. done for us, getting us on the network. And um, I mean, we've got, we've got a couple, usually this year we're like, we're going to kind of do more of the same. But next year, uh, we're going to be doing, uh, I think it's going to come out next week. Actually, we're doing an LLB movie pitch episode. It's going to be kind of a newer thing we do Ah, sweet where we find like a, a basically a topic. So with this one, we did like the creed treatment. So we take movies that people are talking about rebooting uh-huh. and instead of fully rebooting, making a shot for shot, we give it the creed treatment. So we nice. kind of say extend where the universe. Some, yeah. It's something yeah. it's tangential. Yeah. It's a tangential sequel. I'm really excited about that. I've got, we've got like 10 or 15 different ideas for that. So that might be kind of like an every 10 episode type oh, of thing. Sweet. Yeah. That'd and be then sweet. The thing I'm most excited about, we're going to be doing a burbs commentary. <laughs> I just came up with no that. On my <laughs> I just came up with that just now. Oh my God, things, Sean, you're so smart. These things just happen? come to me. You're like the idea, man. <laughs> It's like an it's you like know, a cash register of ideas. I just ring the bell and out it comes. <laughs> it's weird. I've got this million dollar idea movie. What if we have like this universe of movies where everybody's searching for I don't know like stones or something like that. <laughs> that one bad oh guy God. gets it. 
What do you yeah. think? Like he claps when he claps, like everybody dies. Half the people no, die. No, no, not claps. Um, when he, um, John, oh, any ideas? Um, oh, no, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, it's, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I just, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll workshop yeah. it later. <laughs> All right. Well, John, is there any place you want to send anybody before we start doing Richard's closing thoughts? Oh man, just podrose.com. Check out some of the other shows, some of the other great, great shows on there. Yeah. Do or, all of the th- or, or Okay. Okay. So this involves everyone. So we have a T public store and you can get your favorite LOB army t-shirt on there. And in order to remember that, that's T E E dot P U B slash L I C slash pod bros. Oh, beautiful. It's got its own jingle. <laughs> and it's a jingle. Let's get Why don't we have every a jingle? Because I'll, um, I'll, I'll work on. Uh, let me let me just ring the cash register here for a jingle. Come on, <laughs> go, idea man. My baloney. Is <laughs> my <laughs> podcast has a first name. That's L A N G U A G E. Well, Richard, give us a little bit of Richard's closing thoughts as we're bringing 2018 to a close and looking forward to 2019. Tw- you know what? 2018, 2018. You know what 2018 was about, Sean? 2018 was about loss. We lost a lot of good heroes. We lost a lot of series on Netflix. We lost, you know, we lost a lot of things. 2019 is about rebirth. 2019 is about coming back from the tragedy that has befallen you <laughs> in the previous years and coming and and coming back and saying no that's my ham sandwich and 2019 is the year where you reclaim that sandwich in the name of decency and uh a, re- a return it's 2019 is the year of triumphant returns that's what it is i love it all right, well, let me do a little bit of housekeeping before we call this year. Uh, go to our website, it's languagebronos.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We're at languagebro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languagebronos.com. You can like us on Facebook. And like I said, we're trying to make this podcast go to new heights for our fifth year anniversary. So go out, spread the LOB army, get people recruited by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. And when you're there, you can leave up ratings and reviews because ratings and reviews are super, super helpful. Help keep you in in search algorithms. Help keep your keep your name in lights, our name in lights. But we'll put your name in lights too. And remember, we are part of the best podcast site on the internet, the Pod Bros Network. That's yeah, right. Let's shamelessly plug ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Richard, John, is there any, again, John, thank you very much for joining us again for oh, our you. bro huddle episode. Always. Yeah. Is there anything you. else for me, you guys, before we close it out? I love you too. Oh, I love you guys. All right. Well, that's all bros we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I'm John. And John, how do we like to end these episodes? Oh, man. Oh, I always screw this up. <laughs> I say we eat the beaver. He did it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> he did it. Oh, he does listen. He does. I knew it. I'm one of the 12. He's one of the 12. You're nine of the 12. (laughs) All my different devices.